Casey and I just got Hey, lucky. good morning and welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the Tool Shed. We're hanging out with my buddy Eddie McFarland. No, we're hanging out with Jerry. Whoop, whoop. Hoot. Hey, we're having so much fun in season two. I hope Too you've much. invited some of your friends. Go to our Facebook group. Yeah. Hey, go to YouTube and hit that subscribe button. Smash it. And apparently you get like seven years of good luck if you do that. <laughs> we I, can't I confirm keep that. reading that. And, but we and heard it. They told somewhere. us that. I think Laura. Laura the, the people good. at the YouTube studio told us that. YouTube people. The YouTube, the peoples. We Googled it and it, that's what it said. We might gaggle Seven it. years of good luck if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hey, um, we're going to have to cut all this up. <laughs> this one of a kind. <laughs> Keep going. None of this. <laughs> this one of a kind tool shed that we get to uh, uh, work in every yeah. day is brought to you by Schedule Engine. If you haven't checked out Schedule Engine, you should check out their suite of services. Like you can have less headaches and book more calls. Wow. And that's the way to roll, man, Sounds as a contractor, right? Yeah. Right, and so, um, and this episode, this episode is brought to our, brought to you by our good friends by from Emerson. Man, let me start you, over. You no, know, you crushed This that. episode <laughs> is brought to you by our good friends at Emerson. Okay, was that better? He's good. Let you me do use know. my radio voice. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tool Shed. And now for the rest of the story. You know, I was just going to say, you know, we don't actually have like a big like we're not actually going to come back and cut this out. Like so, but this, it's good. You're, you're crushing it. This is. <laughs> Nobody knows. The Just keep telling me I'm crushing it. <laughs> You're crushing it, bro. You are, like, that's how my mind you works. You are the Paul Harvey of the tool shed. How's Good that? day. Good day. All right. So for the <laughs> three people that know who Paul Harvey was, uh, maybe they can jump in the Facebook group and tell everybody else. Anyway, listen. Guess what? It's week four. It's the halfway point of the huddle. Oh, yeah. Hey, the huddle has uh, been a big hit. Big, big, big hit. hit. We're, we're, we're teaching you how to huddle with your team. How long to huddle, what to do in the huddle. How to communicate like, in the how huddle. How to run the huddle, right? right and, on. and when we call that play, everybody's running the same play because we went to the huddle. We even held hands and made a little, little team, teamwork thing. Teamwork, yep. Jerry and I had a drum circle outside uh, the studio last night. It was fantastic. Um, but listen, <laughs> all, all joking aside, huddles are good. But it doesn't matter until you put it into practice. You can, mm -hmm. you know, you can spar all you want, but unless you get in the ring and you actually put it into practice, you don't really know. So listen, come learn, but please, I don't care if it's just one thing. I don't care if it's just the Jerry Wave. If you do that, I'm telling you, you're ahead of the game, and uh, and 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 keep cruising. Uh, this week, uh, we, we sort of uh, we're asking for, well, you know. What else should we cover? And it was uh, the number of people we talked to. They were like, you know, it's 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 the common objections. And we talked about this last season, but it's it's all about the uh, the framework. And I think we're gonna, we're going to talk about some practical things mm -hmm. you can do with these common objections, even the, how you should think about these common objections. And I know you've got some opinions and stories, um, but but the idea of the, there's a basic framework behind all of this. Uh, th these interactions. We'll talk a, a little bit about that today. We got deep dive on the whole thing. We're gonna get a little, as Jerry says, a little rocket surgery tomorrow on, on uh, the the common objections and what's going on in the background. So lots to get through. We're gonna have a ton of fun as usual. We're gonna keep you safe. We're gonna we're gonna uh, help our apprentices out. But we're gonna start with shoutouts, because shoutouts are cool. Because it's yes, cool to have friends. It is. We have good friends too. No, yeah, I'm thankful for not that. real life, but like on the no, internet. No, I'm thankful for that. I have good friends. You're one of them. Oh, that made me feel good. All right, All right. listen, uh, some of uh, the best friends of the Tool Shed and Schedule Engine, I want to say hi to Ross and, uh, and the whole team at Arctic Air up in New Jersey. He was so nice. He sent us a hat. Yeah. Uh, I know Herb's doing some stuff up there. Just uh, what an incredible organization, incredible company. They really live their mission. They take care of everybody. Um, Wow, that, do you see how the camera came right to me when I put this hat on? Well, that's it what was it like, it's got like dialed in. Could but do this uh, one you know, as we're thinking about great teams that, that look after, still not working. Okay. Uh, great team. I'm thinking of Bradham Brothers <laughs> and, and the entire <laughs> team uh, there. They're just, you know, they're, they're just good people doing good stuff. Uh, for their friends and neighbors, and it's just it's great that uh, they're in the schedule engine family and they're friends of the tool shed. So we're, we're shout out to you guys. Thanks for for the notes and and all the encouragement. We we really appreciate it. Um, Pete. What? Pete. Pete. Brad him. Brad him. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, just I like knew what you were doing. Pete. I was just two seconds okay. away from doing the Heimlich. I thought you, <laughs> I thought you were in trouble. Um, it's a family show. We're not. We wouldn't do that. Um, okay. Uh, let's let's give some tools away because the tool yeah, shed. Hey. 
the place should come to make every job easier and it probably should have some actual tools in it. Um, so what we're doing today, uh, it's, it's a, th this one's kind of cool. It's a ratcheting uh, a box wrench and so it's sort of open-ended. There's a set, comes in a roll and uh, everything, uh, regardless of the trade you're in, um, it'd be a great addition to anybody's toolbox. All you have to do is either uh, invite someone to the group, uh, you can join the group, uh, and, and, and you'd be in the running to win, or you can uh, engage, start a conversation, answer questions, say hello, introduce yourself. Bars, we literally couldn't make the bar any lower without having to dig a hole. Um, hey, uh, what about like a, like a special winner at the end of the season? Are so we gonna try to do that? I, I, was, I was thinking that we wouldn't get through this episode without you mentioning that, uh, but I don't wanna give too much away. I wanna do something special. Like, he's talking real special. Yeah, but, but you, gotta pull, you gotta play to pay, or you gotta, you gotta pay attention. You gotta be in the group. You gotta be in the group. You gotta <laughs> comment. You gotta tag a friend. Hey, we're we're gonna do something uh, special for for a company. I like it. I like it. And I know I know what you're talking about. And it's it's a it's a treat of a prize. So make sure you're paying attention to the group. Okay. So um so we've done shoutouts, giveaways, uh, awesome stuff. Um, uh, you know what? I've 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 been enjoying the journey that we've been along uh, for these weeks with our friend uh, HVC Jess. We're gonna get another tip from her today. If you don't know, HVC Jess, uh, she's a great example of everything that's going on in the trades right now. She's an apprentice and she kind of just tells her story every day, uh, every other day on, on uh, Instagram. You can find her and you can go along with her and she'll show you the kind of calls she's running, the challenges she's facing. She's just super authentic about it, uh, what, she's, uh, what she loves about it, what she's challenged by, and, and uh, she's a great example of all that's uh, good about the future of the trades. And so she's sharing her journey and she's got a little tip for the day for the apprentices. Let's roll the tape. Hello, tool shedders. I'm HVAC Jess, bringing you the apprentice tip of the week. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes it feels to me like my apprenticeship is going so slowly. Like it's not progressing at all. And like, I'm never gonna be a qualified journey person. And if you're having those same thoughts, I invite you to realize that every single day on the job or at school is progress towards your career. Think about your very first week in your trade. Now think about how far you've come since then, all the knowledge you've learned, all the experience you've gained. And consider that in, in years to come, you're gonna look back on today and realize how far you've come from today. So keep pushing forward, keep doing what you're doing, keep progressing, we're gonna make it one day. What a good video. She gets you it, know, man. like, I would love <laughs> that. You knew I was gonna love that. First time seeing it. That I just love that because like really like we all do a little bit of that where we think we can accomplish a lot more than we really can in one day. Mm -hmm. But listen, we, we underestimate what we can accomplish in a year or so. It's, uh, listen, it is amazing. Yeah, you got to stay the course. This is, you know what I love about those videos? They're apprentice of, uh, tip of the week, but really they're for everyone. Yeah. Whether it's about never stopping learning, whether it's about you know leaning in and and uh, uh, having a good mindset when customers ask you questions, there's something that we can all learn. I, I feel like uh, we if we if we ever take a vacation, Jess could come and take the show. <laughs> she, she she gets it, man. Um, I, she 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 first off she invited us to to the the, the phrasing was really good there, but. Uh, um, whether you're a journeyman, you can feel like your career, we've all had those plateaus mm -hmm. in our career. You know, it's not just uh, uh, apprentices. There's, there's probably some people that are watching this that are feeling like they're stagnating. And, and maybe not just in work, maybe in life, and maybe, you know, in relationships. And, and we've all felt that, but the, the admonition to just keep forward, take stock of the good days, look back, reflect, you have came uh, a long way, you, you are moving forward, we are progressing, it's just a great, great example. And I think, I think that's, there, there, there's, there's a lot to, there's a lot to appreciate there, right? Look at this pretty drawing I made. Hey, like, hey, hey, I, I kind of think of your career kind of like this. Like, we all want to go from point A, hold up, from point A to point B. Like, we all want our career right. to go like that. Right. And, and you see these sometimes, but really, it plateaus. Yep. And it, they tell me it's like working out, like I wouldn't know about working out, but like they tell me like you work out, you work out, work out, and then you don't see any progress because it plateaus. Mm. And a lot of people give up in the plateau right and they quit working out mm -hmm. or they stop on their career. Yep. 
they stay or relationships or whatever. And if they just go a little bit further, dig in that hole a little bit longer, yep. it picks up again. Yep. I, I, th I think quite often the, the, the thing that's right before uh, one of those upticks is a decision. They, they, they may before every uh, ascendancy in uh, 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 whether it's a relationship, career, or whatever. There's a decision. There's a no BS conversation you have to have with yourself. And mm -hmm. and uh, at the end of the day, you can say whatever you want to anybody else, but you're responsible for yourself and where you find yourself. And I, I, I think um, great yeah. job, Jess. Keep keep the advice coming. We're so grateful that you're sharing your journey with us. And it's uh, uh, like I say, I, I get a lot of uh, hope from uh, watching that. So. Speaking of journeys, let's take a journey into the meme land because that's what the kids do. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's pull up this first one. It's a corker for sure. Uh, we've all seen this. It's the, it's the, uh, the Darwin Award of the year. But uh, it's like, if only had something could scooch him up higher. You know, it's, what's great is this is, this is hilarious. We've, but we've all done something just as, <laughs> as, as dumb as this. Um, don't be that cat. Don't be that cat. Have you ever driven one of those? Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> I, don't think yeah. that's, I don't think that's... Yeah. Uh, I wonder if anybody's raced a set of those. No, that'd be super dangerous. Super dangerous. Yeah. All right, uh, let's look at the next one. You're falling from 25 feet. Hey, uh, boss, I don't know what everybody's yeah. all saying, uh, but I got that install done in record time. Super quiet. Super quiet. Uh, we're good. We're good. Um, wow. Wow. You think it's expensive to hire a professional? <laughs> <laughs> you should try to hire a hack. Oh my goodness. Right. Oh my, I don't know why everyone says HVAC is hard. It's super easy. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even have to bend over and put the line set in. It was great. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's the guy that, that bought uh, an Ikea bookshelf and ended up with a bench. All right, um, <laughs> let's, let's take a look at the last one. Ooh, I don't believe in indoor air quality. That's gross. So for, for those that aren't uh, indoctrinated into the fraternity of HVAC, that is when you hear someone talk about a coil, every little bit of air that you breathe in overnight as you sit and take deep breaths passes over that coil. Ten times a day. Uh, uh, this is where, that's one of those calls when you're like, so can I ask you, I didn't, uh, I didn't see any pets. I know like, we don't have any pets. Why do you ask? I'm like, did you lose one? Because <laughs> I found it. Uh, the last owners did. Why do you ask? I've had that happen already. Yeah. Uh, do, uh, that's gross. Uh, don't be gross. Um, don't hang around people that are gross. That's nasty. Please, uh, friends, don't let friends breathe stanky air. So uh, <laughs> this is literally why IAQ was invented. All you have to do is spell it. It's so gross. Ooh, oh man, <laughs> that I can made smell me that. I can smell yeah. that. I've been on a call and that's gross. Super gross. Super gross. All right, that's the funny stuff. <laughs> it's not really funny. They it's call it gross. dirty sock syndrome for a reason. That is not good. Yeah. All right. Oh uh, boy. All right. <laughs> that's that one's that one's gonna scar me. Okay, let's talk safety because uh, it's super important. And, and the one thing uh, I want to talk about today, and, 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 and this one I actually feel we've made some progress on in the last number of years, it's, it's simple. It's eye protection. Mm. And, and I'm going to tell you a story when I go uh, serious about eye protection because, you know, I, I think, uh, quite frankly, I think people on uh, construction sites do a lot of uh, PPE a lot better than us. And typically there's a safety office and there are a lot of reasons for that. But, but if you're an individual operator, part of a team, or you work on your own and no one's really checking up on you, I want you to, uh, I want you to really think long and hard. There, uh, the eyewear of today, first off, super stylish. It comes in all different kinds of uh, configurations. You can get prescription ones. You can get all kinds. It's, it's really important. And here's when I decided that I was going to wear eye protection. Uh, somebody asked me, they saw me working, and they didn't, they didn't jump on me. I didn't have my, uh, my eyewear on. They didn't jump on me. They, but he came up and he asked me, he said, you have a kid, right? I said, yeah, a daughter. He goes, oh, yeah. He said, um, looking forward to having grandkids? I said, yeah, yeah, no, one day. And he's like, uh, you want to be able to see what that kid looks like? He says, it's real tough with scratch corneas. He says, when, when your daughter... Uh, if she walks down the aisle one day, do you want to see what she looks like in that dress or do you want to have someone explain it to you? And that's the reality. Uh, when you look at accidents uh, in the trades, mm -hmm. they're called accidents. For no one plans to have them. And the number of times I got stuff in my eye because I was working on the ground and I was tracing a line and I just happened to look up for a second and touch something. And as soon as I touched it, you know, 20 years of dust came down and next thing you know, I'm like, 
seeing ET in my eyes and all kinds of n nasty stuff. It only takes a second, but habits, um, good fundamental habits, popping them on. Plus, you, you look professional, you look safe. Again, you don't have to tell people you're, you're, you're serious about your trade, they can tell. So, eye protection is your friend. As my friend, a reefer guy says, work mm -hmm. safe, be safe, be good humans, and, and uh, protect your eyes. You only get one set. It's Love important. It. Yeah, it's super important. Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, you're welcome. All right, so we were talking. Today is all about common objections. And um, I remember we, we were talking uh, before we started. Uh, you, you were telling us, uh, you started to tell a story about uh, a salesperson. You, you had a, yeah. a, a so, so why, don't you, why don't you share that one? Kick that one yeah, off. So, like, uh, so we're talking about common objections. And if you stop the tape here and said, hey, okay, team, what are the top five objections you hear? All of your team will tell you the same five things. And so mm -hmm. we should have a story to overcome that objection. Right if on. you keep hearing the same thing and, and you don't know how to answer that, that's your fault. Right on. That's not the homeowner's fault. Right. And so I had a salesperson that was working with me one time and, and, uh, and he, he was kind of struggling. And, and so we, we had a one-on-one, -on -one, we had a huddle. And I said, hey, so what's going on? He says, well, I, I'm not real sure. I give them the price and they, they say, well, your price is really high. And I say, huh. and I, I'm like, that, that's it? He was <laughs> like, yeah, I don't really know what to say. And I'm like, well, what happens? Well, they don't buy. Okay, and well, tell me about your next call yesterday. He said, well, I went in. They said my price is really high. And, and I, I just said, well, our prices are what our prices are. And I'm like, Okay. Solid. Rock solid. And so, uh, what happened on your third sales call yesterday? He said, well, they said the same thing. And I said, man, look, you got to have an answer for that. If right. you keep hearing the same question and you keep giving the same response and you keep there's a getting, word for that. we don't buy from you, there's a word for that. And listen, <laughs> life is difficult, man. Yep. Life is hard. It's really hard if you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, man, <laughs> write out an answer for what you're going to hear. Or and ask when some, someone. Ask someone. Like, <laughs> listen, I'll help you with that if, you, if you're having a problem with one. I'll help you with it. But listen, there's very few things that that homeowner is going to say to yeah. you that yep. you haven't heard a thousand times and you should have an answer. Here, here's, here's the one thing. Like, <laughs> it's the homeowner's job to ask those questions. I see a lot of people get frustrated by that and then they start to think that the person's right, like our prices must be too high because everyone's right, saying it. Right. And here's the thing, remember we talked about the value of a dollar, we talked about storytelling, and you live in an information age. You can literally, we, you can go back to the old uh, season one, we talked about a lot of stuff, and we'll, we'll route through some examples of practical, like what you should say. But one of the things I love about today's age is there's so many, uh, like so there's the, the, the Toolshed Facebook group, but there's literally hundreds more specifically for whatever trade you do. And even mm -hmm. if all you did was go in and say, hi everyone, wondering what you say when somebody says blank, and all you have to do is cut and paste. You can just screenshot it. You don't even have to write anything down. But you can ask people what they say when it, and uh, if, if you work in part of a team, practice this. Buddies don't let uh, buddies walk in to situations blind. And so there's, really a handful of things and, and you know it's usually I can find it on the internet uh, it was working till you go out here I don't understand your price like mm -hmm. there's it's just you, a, and, it's and, a small bucket and, really, it's a small, it and it's totally okay for the homeowners to say that because you know as Zig Ziglar says you know your price isn't too high you just didn't give me enough reasons to buy it and and every time somebody says something it's just a really good indication that you need to share a little bit more and, and sharpen up. And you might not get on that call because that time might have passed, but you can practice for the next call. Every one of us gets opportunities every day, right? Man, listen, I've been in, in small groups with four or five technicians, four or five roofers, yep. four or five salespeople. And we said, hey, when you get this objection, like your price is too high or I'm going to shop around, what do you say and what do you mm -hmm. say and mm -hmm. what do you say? And we get to one person and they say, well, I say this and everybody goes, Everyone grabs their holy pen. crap, <laughs> that is right. so good. I'm and from that point on, Everyone's it wasn't equipped. just this guy yep. saying it, everybody it was, was saying yep. it and we all got better and we just said, hey, I got a good one for this and right. you got a good one for that. That's and that's how you I'm get I'm telling better. you, there's someone in, in the room right now that has a nugget 
uh, for exactly the thing that you keep stubbing your toe on. Again, we're not gurus. We didn't come up with anything. We, we haven't reinvented language. There's no magic bullets, but we've been around a lot of smart cats. Remember, you know, uh, um, uh, that no one person in the room is as smart as everybody in the room. And, and get, uh, you know, if, if you're the smartest cat in the room, get in a different room. And you can do that virtually. You can yeah. get in different organizations, different uh, uh, groups, different associations. Uh, uh, you can probably find an answer that would work for your industry actually from a friend in a different industry because they kind of, there's a structure to these. And yeah. as we talk about them, there's a few places you go. So that's the idea. So let's talk about some of the practical stuff. When, uh, uh, when someone says your price is too high, one of, the, one of the most interesting ones I thought, and it was really good, uh, and this one's actually uh, from the legend himself, Tech Daddy Charlie Greer. Uh, uh, he used to, so, so yeah, tell me where my price is too high. Here. Okay, so Eddie, yep. wow, man, your price is too high. My price is too high, and 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 it sounds and and I know you, you're thinking uh, if I do that I'm going to get thrown out of the house. I'm telling you, if the customer's really engaged, they just want to share like what what they're thinking about your price, and so you redirecting just gives the customer a chance to actually explain what it is. And if you don't, if you're not feel comfortable. Uh, about that, you can be like, oh, wow, well, uh, tell me more about that. You, you can ask. But that simple redirect yeah. of uh, repeating the statement as a question, uh, you'll be amazed. Uh, uh, like, and and that, by the way, that same uh, strategy, oh, man, I have to wait uh, uh, that long. You can say, oh, you, you don't want to wait that long. You can, you can actually t phrase most things as a question. Uh, have you heard any good ones for that? I will tell you this. Yeah, I've done that so long. Yep. That when I do it at home. Yep. My wife says, "Stop doing that." Right. right I know right. what you're doing. I, I, I similar <laughs> thing. And, and 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 this is we talk. But it just becomes your DNA. That's how you talk to people. And if you do it enough, it makes sense to people. Like there's there's a, like uh, and you said we didn't invent language. I, I think I probably invented a couple of words, <laughs> just like <laughs> southern country slang words, yep. right? But like, there's an art to this, and you can learn this. I learned this. Like, I was terrible at my job yep. when I started. Yep. You learned this, and we learned it from other people. We're trying to share it with you. So I, we talked about this the other, uh, some other times. Uh, your price is too high, or I can find it uh, cheaper online. I can get it in the big box store. There's something they call the three Fs, more commonly known as feel, felt, found, and it's just a communication tool. The one thing I'll say about all of this is what Jerry says, he, uh, he does this uh, with, with at home. Uh, I, I've certainly done the same thing. And the reason that we do this is to be authentic because when it's your communication style, it's authentic. When it's something you do to someone, it's inauthentic. If mm -hmm. this is just a trick that you're trying to do and, you're, you're, and your default communication style isn't to genuinely seek deeper understanding, uh, dog smell fear uh, customer smell BS. So this, um, hear me. This isn't like yeah. a. We don't want to teach that. That's right, right, right. We're they, teaching. This isn't a magic trick. No. This is a sincere desire, and so, but, but you can get good at that sincere desire, and you can get better. And one of the ways is feel felt fun. I understand how you feel, Missy Smith. You know, a, a, a lot of uh, my customers have have, uh, have found that, uh, but uh, uh, have felt that. But what they found is once they understood everything that was involved, and then you just practice the two or three things that are commonly involved in, in this or the differences between yours and the online one. And, and then I know how you're going to end it. And you say, and that's why most of them choose to go with me. Is that what you would like to do? Or how would you like to move forward? And you, yeah. you put the, the ball back in, in the customer's court. So it's a feel felt found. It's a tight little reason that, by the way, you don't have to come up with, if you're not like Wordsworth, get with some people. Heck, I'll help D, you. Yeah, DM uh, Jerry and I. Yeah. The, the, the answer is out there, and then you practice it. You get good. You, 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 uh, you learn in the huddle, but you have to actually take it out. And, and just because the first time it doesn't work, don't flake out, right? So uh, uh, callbacks. Hey, listen, you can use that feel felt found all throughout your life. Oh, my you goodness. You can use it with your kids. When they're fearful of something, you can uh. tell your kids, I understand how you feel. Yep. Like other kids probably felt that way too. Yep. And what they yep. found out, it wasn't that bad. Like so you, good, it's Jerry. such a, a wonderful way to communicate. Yep. And so it, what, what was the next one? So I was, you know, I was, I was, I was talking about callbacks, but as you, as you were sharing that, you know, that I, it got me thinking about, um, uh, 
commiseration. I was thinking of you uh, uh, talking. Uh, sometimes when people tell you something, they're not actually looking for you to do anything about it. They're just like, when someone says, man, it's hot outside. And you're like, yeah, it's hot outside, right? It's, sometimes they just want someone to, yeah, it is expensive. Or yeah, this is a big investment, right? That's it. You, we, That's we, it. We, we don't necessarily, it's called editorializing. And sometimes we get in the habit of projecting what we think that customer meant or what that last customer meant when they said that. And we bring that onto it. And so don't editorialize. Sometimes it's just good to commiserate. And you can, and there's, uh, Charlie Greer has another one of these. Uh, it, it's expensive. It's expensive uh, to own a, a home. It's called these heating, cooling, electrical components. Uh, yeah. they, they run all this time. It's expensive to run a plumbing company. And they, he's got this whole scripting. And if, you, if you're a scripting cat, I'm telling you, the information's out there. But there's no excuse to run into these uh, issues without doing a little bit of homework. I'm telling you, I'm not that smart. I'm just a scooch on the, the uninspired side. So I'll just... Learn something once. I remember I took a weekend to learn that like 12 years ago, and I still remember it. No, that's awesome. A because, scooch. A scooch. It's a, I've never had a scooch, really. It's, a, it's on the metric imperial system. Okay, good, good, good. Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a, a, la, a last one uh, I, I, is uh, I, I think this idea of not steamrolling a customer. Again, you said it so well a few weeks ago, this idea of we control the call, not the customer. When a customer says this, they're in, please don't get mad at your customer. It's not like, you know, um, sometimes they say stuff because that's the path we've led them on. And, and when they say it, here's a great framework, okay? Just want you to, to, um, to validate what they said, restate it to make sure you understand it, uh, reassure them, and then, uh, and, and then uh, repeat your point and ask how you want to move forward. Yeah, so, um, hey, I understand that probably was uh, a lot of money if you're not pre prepared for it. And uh, I want you to know that once we take care of this for you, you're not going to have this issue again. So if you just let me know how you'd like to move forward, I'm, I'm happy to do it any way you like. You know, that's called a human interaction when we actually val when we're present enough to, to really uh, connect with the person in front of us. I'm telling you, the people that do that, they never seem to have problems with customers. Listen, if yep. you were to write a book, yep. I would read your book. Oh. Like, I really would. Oh, I would. You know, I don't like audio books, but I probably well, listen to accent, your book because so. I just like to listen to you I talk. Can... But listen, if he wrote a book, wouldn't you read his book? Man, hey man, like, I, I, really, like you're just dropping all kind of good stuff today. I, I appreciate. It. I would even, I, I might even break out my Sean Connery accent for that. Do one. it. Yeah, sure, of course. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so here's here's the framework. Here's the magic behind everything. Okay, um, the whole system, regardless of the common objections, is two steps: stay focused on the issue and stick to your talking points. That's step one, right? Stay focused. Don't get dragged off the issue and stick to your talking points. Step two. Have talking points. And if that seems crazy silly and really easy, it really is that easy. Don't get distracted. Don't get pulled off topic. Stick to your talking points. And by the way, before you go into that call, have talking points. You, Jerry and I uh, were talking at dinner uh, last night. And we're talking about, can you imagine being doing, doing this job for 20 years, 30 years, at four calls a day, five calls a day, and running into these things virtually, at least weekly, if not daily, and having to think on your feet every single time, can you imagine how exhausting that would be? Or perhaps develop a framework, uh, uh, enhance your default authentic communication style, be emotionally present and validate the customer, and then just communicate all the incredible value they've taken a few minutes to learn. That's it. Uh, if you do that, uh, People can, can sense in your core when, when you believe what you're saying, and uh, you will have less issues on your job. I'm telling you, um, uh, if you get nothing else, just do that. Two-point two framework, super easy. That's it. You know, I don't normally watch the tool shed, but I'm going to watch this episode because you were so good today. Like, you were oh, crazy good stop today. It. I mean, keep going, but stop it. No, that's it. Hey, listen. So the impact point of the day, the focus of the day is either develop some talking points. Again, you can do it as a team. You can do it on social media anonymously. You can call us. I'll uh, help you. Develop it. And if you have them already, use them. Practice. Pay attention. What words? Prick the customer's ears up. When, when do you see their shoulders go, oh, 
all. You, if you develop and use these communication tools, you will see it. But it doesn't work if you don't take it out of the truck with you. That's it. Uh, as always, I just want to thank, um, we're the luckiest people in the trades. We really are. I want to thank the people that make this possible. The team at Schedule Engine for uh, making this possible. The entire uh, uh, staff at uh, Emerson have chosen to invest in this time and bring this to you and, uh, on, on, on uh, your behalf. And, and uh, lastly, to you, the people that are choosing to invest in themselves and their teams and make the trades and blue collar better. We couldn't do it without you. We are the sum of our parts and I'm so grateful that at the halfway point you're along uh, here with us, Mr. Rollins. That was beautiful work. Really, it was. No. We want to put like a crown on you <laughs> after that. Hey, hey, be good out there so you can do good out there. Be awesome today. Crush it. Uh, get a plan. This is just a huddle. Now you got to go play the game. The successful people that I know that we've known mm -hmm. over the years, they're the ones that put it into action. Love they it. tried it. It wasn't great. They tried it again until they got good at it, and then they became great at it. Hey, have a great day. Thanks for coming by. See the you tomorrow. Woo!